Here is another video of research methodology, the role of p-value in decision making. Every researcher is worried about his or her research results. Whether the difference is significant or not, whether the hypothesis is found correct or not, how can one decide to answer these questions and conclude the research study? It is only by the help of p-value. Now what the p-value is? Why is it so important in deciding the conclusions of research studies? So the p-value is defined as the probability of obtaining a result equal to or more extreme than what was actually observed. It was first introduced by Carl Pearson in his Pearson's chi-square test. P is also used for proportion of possible samples. The samples may seem to have no difference at all, but the proportion of samples may have as big or bigger difference in all participants. The p-value is used to predict the correction of null hypothesis and as you know that the null hypothesis says that there is no effect or relationship between variables. But, but if p-value is significant, it means there is significant difference then the null hypothesis will be rejected and will predict that there is some effect or relationship between variables in research. In this figure also you can see that the acceptance region, acceptance of the null hypothesis region is in the center but the smaller tails they are uh, alpha 0 0.025 and the other region is also here alpha 0 0.025 which will make the alpha 0 0.05. This one is the rejection region, means the null hypothesis will be rejected at these tail regions. Now suppose we want to study the effect of two drugs A and B and P was equal to 0 0.05 in, in the case of drug B. What does that mean? It means that only 5% chances are that the null hypothesis is correct and 95% chances are of the evidence against null hypothesis or it means that only 5% chances are for no effect or relationship between variables. It means one drug works which is drug B in above figure. What about the drug A? For this drug P is equal to 0.17. It means that 17 out of 100 trials support the null hypothesis whereas remaining 83% will not support and it will reflect that there is no effect or very little effect between drug trials with placebo. So what is the meaning of significant difference? If the p-value in any comparison of groups in research is small then the results are statistically significant. There are four decision points for p-value. Number one is p greater than 0 0.05, p less than 0 0.05, p less than 0 0.01 and p less than 0 0.001. Now what do these p-values mean in research studies? Number one, p more than 0 0.05 means no evidence of effect and it's statistically non-significant means no relationship between variables and the null hypothesis is acceptable. But if P is less than 0 0.05, it means reasonable evidence of effect and it is statistically significant, means there is significant relationship between variables. Number three, P less than 0 0.01, there is good evidence of the effect and there is a statistically significant relationship between variables. P less than 0 0.001 means it suggests that very strong evidence for effect and very highly significant relationship between variables exists in the research study. So the p-value is can be interpreted as if it is less than 0 0.01 it will show a very strong evidence against null hypothesis. What was null hypothesis? 
As earlier I told you that the null hypothesis means no relationship between variables. If less than 0.05 then the evidence will be moderate but if p is 0 less than 0.01 then there will be strong evidence against null hypothesis. But the last if p is more than 0 0.10 then there will be little or no evidence against null hypothesis. Now some examples are here. A study was conducted on young adults having raised levels of depression symptoms. They were recruited for three weeks diet intervention and named as diet group. Other group was control group and was on habitual diet for three weeks. Both groups were monitored two times. First at the time of start of study means at the baseline. The other monitoring of diet and depression was after three weeks means completion of intervention. At the end when the depression was computed, the researcher found 0.09 p-value which shows significantly lowered depression in the diet group as compared to the control group or the habitual group. On the other hand, the habitual diet showed no significant difference by the passage of time and its p-value was 0.91. In this way, it is decided by the help of p-value that the diet improved depression of selected adults in that study. Another example of p-value in research is two groups of hypertensive diabetic patients were selected and intervened one with ethanolol and other with captopril drug. After completion of intervention, the group who received ethanolol had decreased diastolic blood pressure. The p-value was 0 0.02 which is less than 0 0.05. It means if null hypothesis is no effect of ethanolol on diabetic blood pressure, then the p-value can be interpreted that there is moderate evidence against null hypothesis and there is significant difference in two groups. So the ethanolol is good for hypertensive diabetic patients. In this way, the p-value again helped in decision making, but two drugs used for hyper, uh, in between the two drugs used for hypertensive diabetic patients. Now, what are the statistical misconceptions uh, which are regularly faced by these researchers? Number one, as we have discussed earlier, that small p-value shows significant relationship, but large p-values show non-significant but it does not uh, mean that there is no effect there may be an effect but the sample size may be too small to detect the p-value with reliability number two it is also not true that a very small p-value reflects a very strong effect number three it only reflects that there is good evidence of an effect so we must see the size of effect and the confidence interval. The confidence interval will be elaborated in another video. That's all from now on. Thanks for watching.